Thank you for worshiping with us at Jackson Chapel Sammy Church, located at 418 Water Street in Cortland, Alabama, where our pastor is Reverend David T. Young Sr. Please join our service already in progress. another day. Amen. Amen. And we ought to be grateful because it could have been the other way. Is that right? Amen. Amen. David said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I feel? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? So as we come to lift him up today, the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. For this today the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. For well, the psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. So we are in the house today. So I want to ask the question, are you in the house? Amen. Or are you back at the house? Amen. Amen. Let's lift up the name of the Lord. Come on, choir.
everything. Amen. Amen. Let us now stand and unite in the historical confession of our Christian faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From then she shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Church, say amen. amen. God is all of everything. Yes. 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 We can depend on him for all our needs. Yes. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help that I know. Right. If thou shalt withdraw thyself from thee, O oh Lord, whither shall we go? Fathers, again, we come to say thank you for allowing us to see another day. Lord, we thank you that while we laid unconscious to this world last night, you had an angel to watch over us all night long. And then, Lord, right soon this morning, you Look down from heaven, you saw fit that our life would roll on a little while longer. We just want to say thank you. And then, Lord, like the old folks said, when we got up this morning, we had the right activity of all them. Lord, we thank you that we had eyes that we can see. Lord, we had legs that we can walk. Lord, we thank you for a tongue that we can thank you and to give you praise. For blessing us one more day. And Lord, you gave us enough sense to know that we hadn't always done what you told us to do. And we come like David came after you to create us a clean heart and renew the right spirit within us. Lord, we thank you for the little place that we can call our home. Thank you for the clothes that you blessed us to put on our back. And Lord, we so thank you for the food that you gave us for the nourishment of our body. And then, Lord, you gave us a mind and to, to come out to the house of worship one more time. Lord, we just want to say thank you. Father, as we come, Father, we're giving you praise, worship, and honor. As the songwriter is saying, Father, you is everything. We thank you for being all that we need, Father. Some of us, Father, need a mother. And you've been a mother for us. Some of us been a leader, Father, you've been a father for us. Lord, somebody need comfort, and you comfort us. And then, Lord, we had fallen down, Lord, and you picked us up. And we just want to say thank you. Lord, we thank you for our family. We thank you for our children. And we thank you for our church family. Whether you draw so close that one came forward or the other. Be with us throughout this service, Father. Bless our pastor as he stands, Father, to declare your word, Father. And when we leave this place, Father, we'll be better than when we came, Father. May Lord ask you to bless Reverend Grissom in that absence, Father. Bless Pastor Bankhead, Father. Bless this entire church body. And Lord, when you got through blessing over here, we're going to tell the world how good you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
man. A weeping may endure for a night, but early in the morning, everything's going to be all right. After all, I've been through. After all, I've been through. I still have joy. Amen. For our scripture reading from the gospel as recorded by St. Matthew, the seventh chapter. Beginning at verse number one. And we're going to read through verse number 12. Matthew chapter seven. And the word reads, Judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but consider not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how would thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the moat out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then you shall see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. Give not that which is holy unto the dog, Neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. But what man is there of you whom, if his son asks bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give ye good things to them that ask him? Therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. This is God's word for God's people. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. I worship you. 
what you call praise and worship. Amen. Amen. I wasn't even ready for him to stop. Amen. I just, I just sit there. Amen. Sometimes you just have to let go and let God. Amen. Amen. For he is good and he is good all the time. We give him praises right now for he has been mighty good to us. Amen. It seems like it's been a long time since I preached on Sunday morning. But we're so glad to, to be here. Uh, God has brought us from a mighty long way. And to be in this place on this first Sunday in the month of September. Amen. We give honor to our Heavenly Father today who doeth all things well to his only begotten Son, Jesus the Christ, 
who is our Redeemer, and to his precious Holy Spirit, who is our sustainer, to Pastor Bankhead and his, Pastor Grissom in his absence, to uh, Reverend Jones, to Sister Young in her absence, and to all of you God's children. It's a blessing. It's a blessing Amen. for us to be here today. Amen. We're so glad that God has allowed us another opportunity to stand before you and behind this sacred desk. I was thinking as Glenda was singing, too often we take for granted what God has done for us. Too often we go from day to day without a care in the world. But we serve a God that looks beyond our faults and supply our needs. I want us today for just a few moments to turn your attention to the gospel that's recorded by St. John. Chapter 8. <coughs> Beginning at verse number 1. John chapter 8. Beginning at verse 1. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. And the Bible reads, Jesus went up unto the Mount of Olives. And early in the morning he came again unto the temple. And all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery, and when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now the law of Moses says that such should be stoned, but what do you say? This they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground, and when they heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, they went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those that accuse you? Have no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn you. Go your way and sin no more. This is God's word for God's people. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Let us pray. 
Father God, we come now once again as an empty pitcher before a full fountain. Praying that you would preach to us. Touch our hearts. Prepare us now to receive your word. For Father, it is by your word that we live and by your word that we have our being. We ask now, Heavenly Father, that your Holy Spirit will come. Move in this place. Convict us. Change us. That we might walk henceforth in your holy ways. Now I ask, Father, that you would strengthen me, that I may declare what has already been written. I ask you, Father, to let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. For you, Lord, are our strength. You are our Redeemer. And the host of God said, Amen. amen. The church say amen. amen. Let us say amen again. Amen, amen. one more time. Amen. One for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Spirit. For they all work together as one. A while back, maybe a couple of years, maybe three years or more, but I remember seeing a TV program. It was more like uh, a game show. And on this particular show, they would make a statement, and the contestants had to figure out who was responsible for that said statement. For instance, there was one man that said, It's not what my country can do for me, but what I can do for my country. One man said, I float like a butterfly, and I sting like a bee. Statement that have been connected to one person or another. And what I found is that we sometimes fabricate statements. That means that we make them up. I wish I had somebody. And in our text, we find a situation that Jesus was presented with. And in this situation, there were people that came that had their version of what should take place, how it should take place, and who it should involve. So I want to talk to you this morning for just a few moments on the thought, whose line is it anyway? <coughs> whose line is it anyway? That particular 
game show was entitled, Whose Line Is It Anyway? We as Christians have many habits that we have developed over the course of time. But one of our worst habits that we possess, other than talking too much, backbiting, lying, or as my daughter would say, carry on bad, and potential action is pointing our fingers at others. Is that right? Amen. If you ever, and, and this is sarcasm, so, so when you listen to this next statement, you, you understand. If you ever want to find a group of perfect people, just go to church. Sometimes it seems like we love the idea of throwing rocks and hiding our hands. But I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, have we ever just stopped to think about the concept of finger pointing? As I thought about it and thought about it and thought about it some more. This concept was developed by people that feel like everyone does everything wrong except them. No, oh, I wish I had somebody. Everybody does everything wrong except for them. In our text, we find Jesus shedding a light on the concept of finger pointing. Let us look at this in a much clearer perspective. The first thing is that the odds are always against you when you point. Y'all need me to show you? Because when you point one, Three are pointing back at you. I wish I had somebody. And let me, let me help us because I found that there are at least three things. There are many more, but there are three things that finger pointing does. The first thing, it convicts the pointer. If you remember, I read in Matthew chapter 7, it says to judge not so that you will not be judged. For with the same judgment that you judge, it will come back to you. In other words, uh, uh, Pastor Bank, if you draw a bath when you get out of the tub, the water is dirty. Am I right? I haven't seen anybody that, 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 that get in a bathtub uh, full of water and the water is still the same as it was when they got in. But isn't it strange that some of us think that we go in the water clean and come out clean? Some of us go in dirty and come out dirty. But finger pointing convicts the pointer. So when we look at our text, we find these men, the scribes and the Pharisees that bring this particular woman to Jesus with an idea of pointing. We caught her in the very act. Now, we know what the law says. The law of Moses said that she should be stoned to death, and we got our rock. And we ready to fire up on her head. All we want to do is let you say the word. 
Now, now Jesus said, well, I'm going to ignore him for a moment. And he, he, he began to write on the ground. And like many, like many of us, the Pharisees and the scribes got mad. Man, did you not hear what we said? She was caught in the very act. Now, what are you going to do about it? Jesus said, well, I believe I better cool down this situation. I'm not going to stand up and quote scripture. I'm not going to stand up and point at her. I'm not going to stand up and do anything, but I'm, I'm going to diffuse the situation. So the Bible says that Jesus stood up and said, well, here's what you do. I'm not going to tell you not to throw. I'm not going to tell you that she didn't do wrong. I'm not going to tell you that I'm going against the law, but all I want to do is ask which of you that's without sin, then you can throw the first stone. That's all I want you to do. So the Bible says that it got kind of quiet. I wish I had somebody. Can you imagine that some of them had toasted them rocks for a long way? Couldn't wait. Ready to fire up on that joke. I, I brought my rock. And, 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 and probably uh, one of the Pharisees was so excited about uh, because it, it said beginning at the eldest to the least. So he was going to get the first shot because he was standing closer because you know when you get an eye age, man, you can't throw as far so they put you in. I wish I had somebody. <laughs> but they were not able to do what they had planned on doing because we have to realize that there are some convictions that come along with finger pointing. If we would ever just stop to think about it and we look back over our lives and, and, and think about some of the things that we've done and we look at folks that are locked up, some of us still have been locked up, but the only reason we're not is because we didn't get I wish I had somebody. Secondly, finger pointing brings about division. Once the person gets started pointing, then they have to recruit somebody else. You know, finger pointing always wants somebody on their side. Am I right? This group of men brought her to Jesus in order to see what his response would be. They waited to get permission. But see, Jesus wasn't going to get on their side. He wasn't going to be on her side. He didn't take nobody's side. He just said to one of you who is without sin that you cast the first stone. In other words, what I'm saying is that when it comes to people, the Lord is no respecter of person. All right. There is no big eyes and no little you. Now, some folk going to get mad because some folk want to be big eyes. Uh, is that right? Amen. They want to be big eyes and everything has to center around me. If it's not me, then who? Well, I stopped by to tell you, you need to understand it's not your line. Well, you want to know whose line is it, then they found out that at the end of the day, it's Jesus' line. He's the one that has the last say so. 
All he said was to one of you that is without sin catch the first stone. The vision. One on the left side, one on the right side, one in the back, one in the middle. And then when the recruiting goes on, it starts out with the G word. Do I need to help us? G-O-S-S-I-P. Anybody ever heard that word? See, because a lot of people get G-O-S-S-I-P confused with G-O-S-P-E-L. <laughs> I wish I had somebody here. I'm almost done. But too often we get the gospel and gossip confused. Finger pointing brings about division. Then thirdly, finger pointing disrupts the program. How many folk have left churches because folk point their finger at them? Made them feel smaller than they all have felt. Belittled them and made them feel like they didn't have no part. But one thing that I found about Jesus, that he welcomes us just how we are. Criticism often stirs up emotions. And I found that we are an emotional people. And when emotions take over, then all logical thinking and practical frame of mind goes out of the window. The devil has a tendency to come into the program and try to tear it down. Reverend Bankhead, there's one reason why when things are going so well, I don't get too high. Huh? Because I know that somewhere there's some finger pointing going on. The devil is trying to destroy the program. Yes. Yes, Lord. The back seat sometimes has a person by the name of Murphy sitting just waiting. In case you wonder, Murphy's Law says what can go wrong will go wrong. He tries to tear down the program. Fingerprinting and finger pointing makes people become offensive. Tempers begin to fly. Steam begins to rise. This group against this group. This board against this board. This member against this member. Amen. Am I right? Amen. But here comes the best part, Robert. And everybody against the pastor. Amen. Oh, I wish I had somebody. You have to know that the devil wants to disrupt your program. So the question comes, who's lying? Is it anyway? My friends, who has the right to point fingers at anyone else? This world that we're living in is in total chaos. And Christian folk ought to be trying to do better. 
Is it amazing that so many non-Christian organizations are united, but the churches are divided? We're too busy casting stones rather than trying to clean the plank from our own eyes. Uh, one songwriter said, you need to sweep around uh, your own front door All right. before you try to sweep around mine. Yeah, Jesus uh, continued to write on the ground. The men had their conscience to kick in. No doubt they started to think about all the things they had done wrong. They remembered that they had no room to point their fingers. The Bible says that the rock uh, began to drop. Heads uh, began to bow. Now, conviction uh, set in on every side. Uh, and the crowd uh, found that there was no need uh, to point fingers at no one. Uh, and I want us to know today, uh, as I get ready to leave you alone, uh, it's time uh, for God's people uh, to be a part uh, of the solution uh, and not be a part uh, of the problem. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, Ain't it all right, huh? Who's lying, huh? Is it any way, huh? What Jesus said, huh? Judge not, huh? That you be not judged, huh? Jesus said, huh? I am, huh? The way, the truth, and the life, huh? Nobody, huh? Nobody, huh? Come to the Father, huh? Except by me, huh? Me, huh, that he looked at the woman huh, and said, Woman, huh, where well, thou accuser? Huh? She said, Jesus, huh, I don't have any. Huh, ain't God all right? Huh? He told her, huh, I don't want to huh, condemn you. Huh, but one thing huh, I want you to do huh, is go your way huh, and sin no more. Huh, ain't God all I'm just wondering here, as I get ready to go, have anybody here ever heard the story about the old farmer that had a goat that fell in the hole, ain't going all right. The story goes that one day the old goat was wandering around in the backyard, fell in the hole, the farmer came looking for the goat, found him down in the hole, the farmer, he tried with all his might to get the goat out of the hole, but with no avail, he said, well, I believe I'll put the goat out of his misery, he took a shovel, throwed dirt on the goat, but every time uh, the farmer would throw dirt uh, on the goat, uh, the goat would shake it all uh, and trample it under his feet. Uh, the farmer kept on uh, throwing dirt uh, on the old goat uh, to shake it all uh, and trample it under his feet. Uh, kept on uh, throwing dirt. Uh, he kept on uh, shaking it all, uh, trampling it under his feet. Uh, after a while, uh, by and by, he had threw so much dirt on the goat. The goat came up out of the hole, ran on. Ain't God all right? Ain't God all right? What I'm trying to tell you, when somebody throw dirt on you, that foot take it all, trap it under your feet. Because when they point at you, three is pointing back. Who's lying? Who's lying? Who's lying in it? They Jesus, Mary's baby, Jesus, my bright and morning star, Jesus, the little of a daddy, Jesus, the rock, my rock, my sword, my shield, he's 
is all right. It is all right. Say yeah. Who's lying? Is it anyway? Somebody gonna bury themselves trying to bury somebody else. Somebody said you dig one ditch. <laughs> oh, I wish I had somebody. You better dig two. Because the one you dig just might be for you. But see, when you got thick skin, when you know that you know that you know, it don't matter what folks say. You're going to keep on running. You're going to keep on doing what the Lord has called you to do. And truly, when they throw the dirt on you, don't worry about it. Just shake it off and trample it under your feet. No, Jesus didn't condemn the woman, but he just told her, just clean up what you messed up and start your life over again. That's what we have to do. Be careful, point fingers, because it doesn't make you holy. All it does is show that you think that you're perfect. I wish I had somebody. So one of these days, the righteous judge is going to come. And he's going to bring in the remembrance. All those things you didn't repent of, that you think you got away with. Oh, I wish I had somebody. That your Kool-Aid was just sweet. Oh, all right. Don't get fooled. For the Bible says, for whatsoever a man sow, that shall he also reap. The doors of the church are open. The doors of the church are open. We extend out the invitation to Christian discipleship. There may be someone we ask that if you would stand to your feet, be anyone today. We bid you come. This is your day. The opportunity to accept the Lord as your personal Savior. Clean up what you messed up. And start your life over again. This is your day. To be one. We bid that you come. To be one. To be one. No one, we have done what the Lord has required of us. You may be seated. I will trust in the Lord.
Amen. Amen. Let us say amen. 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 I will trust in the Lord. You know, uh, I often, I, I pay attention, and I know y'all do too, when we hear certain, uh, I guess you could say melodies, or when we hear uh, certain choruses being sung, or we uh, hear verses being sung, and and I always try to think about what if, you know, like Hewlett Packard uh, commercial used to say, we, we never stop asking what if. But I thought about what if we really live by some of those verses. I'm going to treat everybody right. I'm going to stay on the battlefield. I'm going to stay on my bending knees. What if we really live by those things? Because the people that wrote those songs, they had a, a meaning. Just like when uh, the slaves used to sing songs out in the cotton field and uh, swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. When, if you get that before I do, tell all my friends I'm coming to. There was meaning uh, behind the writing of the song. Even the, the, the song Amazing Grace, it, you know, you used to sing that song and, and uh, uh, there used to be a song as uh, CMEs that we used to sing, and I can still hear that 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 uh, ringing voice of uh, Reverend Ford when he says we sing hymn number one, Holy, Holy, Holy. Yeah, I think y'all remember that. Yeah. Amen. We, I can still hear that, uh, and that was the first thing you grabbed the hymn book. You already knew what the first song was going to be. Amen. Regardless of what Sunday it was, first, third, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, uh, it didn't matter. You knew that song was coming. Amen. And what that done, what that did was it ushered in the Holy Spirit. Holy, holy, holy. You know, and, and I just had to, I had to, when, when he was singing, and I started to think about those, those lyrics. Now, and all those things begin to come in my mind. What if, you know, uh, we just thought about that sometimes? Because uh, it, it means a lot if we would do, you know, those things. Amen. So at this time, let us prepare uh, for our service of Holy Communion. And as we prepare, the, the scripture said, let us each examine ourselves of our own worthiness. Let us not... Uh, judge one another not for me to judge you or for you to judge me but the Bible says let us examine ourselves as we come today to the Lord's table ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins are in love and charity with your neighbor and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy way you draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. In the, in the, in the uh, ritual, it says meekly kneeling upon your knees, but we have made some alter, alterations on this to, to comply with COVID. Uh, Let us have our general confession. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and this well our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, most justly provoking uh, most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. For the remembrance of them is grievous unto us. 
Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs of thy tables, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear son Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful souls and bodies may be made clean by his death, and washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. The church say, Our prayer of consecration, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of that tender mercy that gives our Son Jesus Christ to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction of the sins of the whole world. And he did institute in his holy gospel commanded us to continue in perpetual memory that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father. We most only beseech thee and grant that we receive in these thy creatures of bread and wine according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution. And remember that through death and passion we may be partakers of this most blessed body and blood who in the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave to his disciples saying, take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after the supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave them saying, drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shared for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. And the people of God said, Amen. Myself and the ministers will first partake of this communion. My brothers, this is the bread which represents the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was given to us. Let us take it and eat together, fishing up on our heart. Now this is the cup. It represents the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which shed it for us for the remission of sin. Let us take it and drink together, fishing up on our heart. Now let us all pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thine kingdom come, thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive thy trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now, my brothers and sisters, we ask now that you would take the bread. It represents the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that was given for you. Will y'all take it and eat it together? Feasting up on in your heart. Now will you take the cup? The blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that was shed for you for the remission of sin. Y'all take it and drink together and feast upon in your heart. Amen. 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 O Lord and Heavenly Father, with thy humble servant desire thy fatherly goodness, 
mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most honorable beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son Jesus Christ and through faith in his blood we and thy whole church may obtain remission of sins. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice unto thee. Only beseeching thee that all we who have been partakers of this holy communion may be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, Yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounding duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be to thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. It was the blood. to God today for giving his son that his son may shed his blood that we might have a right to the tree of life if it had not been for the Lord on our side where would we be amen we give God praises today let's give God a hand clap of praise amen you have enjoyed our service with Pastor David T. Young, and we'll see you next week at the same time. May God bless you.